<coughs> shalom, shalom. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Today, uh, I am very, very thankful to God to bring to you the story of a life that is absolutely miraculous and exceptional. And you know, if you, if you look at the people that God made big, look at David. He was a shepherd boy and he was in the fields and the family didn't even think him that he should, they should bring him home when the big prophet came to choose the next king. Dear ones, God is looking for the nobodies to make somebody out of them for everybody. And this morning, or this afternoon, whenever you watch, I have here a former nobody. And God, in his love, made out of him somebody now for everybody. And I know everybody that will watch this, this testimony will receive a new dimension of faith. If God can work in Eddie like he did, he can work in me. And so I want to tell you how we got together. You know, my son, Patrick, he told me on my last birthday, Mama, I have a surprise for you. I didn't know what, so he brought Eddie. I said, oh, oh, this is a surprise. I had no idea who that wonderful young man is. But as I saw him, the Lord spoke to me and said, this is your son. And there was immediate love in my heart for him and a connection that didn't take hours, did it? No, no, no. <laughs> it was instant. And when I found out who he was, I started trembling. I said, wow, 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 wow. Lord, if I had known who he was, I would not have believed that this is really from you. But I know now it's from you. God has brought this young man in my life as my son, and he brought me into his life as his mother. And I am so thankful for the connection that is divine and what God connects, no man can disconnect. And so we asked Eddie today, you know, I, I'm really eager to show you a lot of African testimonies of people who came from situations that looked absolutely hopeless and came into positions that are now a blessing to many. And Eddie has become a, a, a ray of hope for millions of people in this world. And so I'm very thankful that I can call him my boy, and he's my boy. He's not a famous man, he's my son. Mm -hmm. And it's a connection of mother-son. And I know that we will be a blessing to each other, and that his popularity will really bring great effects in changing the lives of millions of people. So, Eddie, yes, thank you for coming. God is a great man. Amina, mm -hmm. thank you for coming and thank you for being willing to share now where were your beginnings Yes, ma and where are you now. Oh, okay. So, now it's all up to you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I want to first introduce myself. <coughs> My name is uh, Eddie Kenzo <coughs> and uh, I'm a musician artist born in Uganda. I was born in Masaka and my mother came from Rwanda during the genocide. She came with her father. Her family was killed and then they managed to escape. Her father and her, they came to Uganda and stationed in Masaka. And then my father was born in, in Masaka Senyange. But he told me, I was talking to him one day and he told me that his family dis disappeared during the war. I don't remember which war, either Idi Amin, Dada, either, I don't remember any, but the way war in Uganda that made his family disappear completely. So on my mother's side, I only knew my mother and her father. And on my father's side, I only knew my father, no one else. So the family stopped there, and uh, my mother died in two, in 94. I was around four, around three, four years, because I'm not so sure of my age, but I was very, very young. I remember my, my, my uh, sister, she was around one, one and a half, around two years old, because for her, I remember, and she's been telling me about it. Now, 
when my mother died, my grandfather, the father of my mother, also died immediately within like a week, two weeks. My mother was buried in uh, her friend's home. <coughs> One of her friends said, this woman has not, nowhere to be buried, and we don't want her to be buried in a, a council land like government land. We, I want her in my home so that I can take care of her and her children. Now, my grandfather, he died when we were not around, and we don't know where he was buried, because he didn't own anything in Uganda. Someone took, took us where they buried our mother, but we didn't spend there much time. Some, so many things happened, and then we ran away from there. We went back where our mother was staying. So when we reached there, the landlord told us that we have to leave this house because your mother, is, she's been sick for almost a year, and I have to take all the belongings that are in the house to, so that I sell them and I bring back my money. So the, he told us, by tomorrow I don't want to see you in the house, and you don't take anything just to leave. That's what we did. We just left. My brother went his way, and I went my way. We were two people, me and my brother. My little sister, she was taken by some, by some lady. I just got to meet her like four months back after 21 years. And me and my brother, everyone went his way. I spent 10 years without meeting my brother. I met my brother uh, around, I think, 10 years back. But I spent 10 years without knowing where he was. And I didn't even know by that time where my father was. God is good. I've managed, I've managed to survive. So where I went, I went to a family. I'm sorry for my English. It's not that good because I don't have any education to speak of. But I've managed to learn English it's through the people it's I meet. Good. And yeah, God is good. <coughs> now, where I went, I went to a family where I was, uh, I was taking care of the calves. They were giving me 5,000 shillings per month. I think it's around, it's around one euro, one euro per month. Yeah. And uh, I spent there around, I don't know, I don't remember which period of time I spent there, but still, I think it was around two, three years. I also left from there. I started, I decided to go and look for my father because I had, my father was there somewhere I didn't know, but they told me in Massacre City. So I came to look for my father and my brother by then. Uh, I spent a longer period of time without meeting them, but eventually I met my brother. And then my brother managed to take me where my father was. My father was a gate man. He was working on a gate at World Vision. And then my father told us that you are not allowed on this gate. Because the person that employed him told him that this is a small fam this is a small house, you don't need a family. You know the house they build on a gate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he told us, just stay there in a distance, I'll come and meet you from there. So when he came to see us, he told us that he can only give us some small portion. We eat from a distance. And after eating, we need to go because he doesn't want his boss to know that he has kids. So that's what we did. We waited, he came, he gave us something to eat, and then we went. So all the time we came to visit him, that's what we've been doing. You don't come straight to the gate. You just stay somewhere there. When he sees you, within the time he comes, greet you. When he, when he has something to eat, he gives you. When he doesn't have, he tells you to go back. He doesn't know where you're going, where you're going to stay, where you're going to be. He just wants you to go because he's not allowed to be with his kids. And then I started hustling. I was working on the building. I've sold water in tax park. I've, uh, I've done so many jobs in my life. I've done so many, many, many jobs in my life. I sold water in the park. I, went, I was a ball boy in the stadiums. I, was, uh, I did many jobs. But during the time I was sleeping on the street in uh, Masaka, there was, I loved football all my life, so I decided to go to a place called Masaka Recreation Ground to be watching people playing soccer. And then I started giving them the ball, 
I started giving them the ball. I started taking care of them. I started befriending them. So at one point, one guy told him, but you have a lot of discipline. Why don't you come with us in the camp so that you can have something to eat? So I started going with them in the camp after eating. I go back. I find somewhere to stay. So I kept on doing that. At one time, they really loved me so much because I was washing their dishes and cleaning their uh, uh, kids after training. They decided to make me stay, start staying with them. I started staying with them, and then uh, at one point, they were coming to play in Kampala. To play. They, they had a match. They decided to come with me. So I hide in, in the bus because uh, the manager didn't want anyone else apart from the, only the players. They, they hide me in, under the chair. I came to Kampala. So when I came to Kampala, I saw a very beautiful city. I was so amazed. I saw tall buildings. And so I decided this is where I have to stay. <laughs> I decided to leave from the village because where I come from, it was a little bit of a village here. It's uh, more upgraded. Hope people are understanding me. My English is really poor, but I wish you get what I'm saying. And um, I decided to, to live in Kampala, to stay in Kampala. I went back to Masaka. At one point, there's another brother of mine who was coming, a player, but he was a brother of mine because I was helping him in many things here and there. He decided to come with me. So I came on something called Akameme in a taxi. You know, you, I was young, so you don't have money to pay, but you sit looking where you're coming from. It's a small, huh? something very little on a Ugandan taxi. Ugandan is what, you know what I'm talking about. So I came up to Kampala. I went, I started uh, working in a Katwe uh, on a welding. I wanted to learn welding, but I was very young and it was uh, burning my eyes because of that smoke. It's not good for the eyes. I decided to, to, to run away. I went to Nachivo Stadium. I started selling so that they are doing the ball boy and going to tax park. I sell water. And then at some point, we sleep under the steps under the steps in the stadium we sleep there you put like the boxes under the podium yeah the stadium stadium the stadium so it, we sleep under the cha the, the stairs mm. so uh, i spent there quite good time but i learned a lot from there that's when i joined uh, an academy soccer academy called sports club villa and from there they would they, they asked me if i ever been to a school and how old were you I think uh, by that time I was around uh, 14, 14. You've never been in school before then? I've never been in school before. My mother died when I was going to play at one. <coughs> but when she died, everything stopped, you know? So the, when they asked me if I ever been to a class, I told during the street, you know, I'm trying to, 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 to shorten the story because it's a long story. Oh, so I'm trying to... <laughs> to yeah. shorten it so yeah. that I don't take so much time. Okay. Nowadays, people don't have a lot of time to sit and, you know. <laughs> and um, there's a guy I was selling milk, you know, selling milk, someone who used to give me milk, and then he gives me 500 per day. So I, he give me, I go supply his milk with a jerry can, and then you go supplying from this. And then uh, I met someone, told me, you're so young, why do you need to work at a young age? I told him my story, I don't have parents, and my father was there, but still, it's like I didn't have anyone, because my father was also homeless, mm -hmm. you know? Very poor. Very poor. He was an scully on the sum, at some gate, but that's what he had. Mm -hmm. And if it was just from there, he didn't have anywhere to go. And I told him that I can take you back to school. He told me which class. I counted, I'm like, since my mother died, I think I, I should have been like in P3 by now. I told him P3. He took me to P3 in Mbalala. I stayed there for a year, and which God did a miracle yeah. for me. Uh, there were a little bit, some, uh, the man had a, 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 a case in the court. Okay. So he was defeated, mm -hmm. and then they told him to pay a lot of money. money, you know. And he told me, you know what, I'm running broke. I think you need to go back on the street. Even my own child, they can't now afford to go to school. So I had to go back on the street. Mm -hmm. And then when they asked me which class, I told them senior one because most of my uh, <laughs> agents were From saying. From P3 to senior yeah, one. <laughs> they were saying, peace, peace, senior one, senior one, senior one, senior one, senior two. So I looked around, I'm like, what should I say? I said senior one. <laughs> 
and then they took me to Rubidi Secondary School. I didn't know anything. But before telling you the Rubidi Secondary School story, let me first tell you the story of me in P3. First time I was among the last. I worked so hard. Second time I was uh, in 20-something position. I don't remember, 20, 25th around there, out of 60 in a class. And then third time, um, they told me, if you don't improve, we are going to take you back to the street. I worked so hard, <laughs> worked so hard on my life. And God did, uh, made a miracle for me. They read number one, they didn't attend. And remember, this is the third time where everyone takes the report. Second one, they, he didn't. Uh, third one, they didn't. Fourth, no. Fifth, no. Sixth, he didn't come. Seventh, he didn't come. And they said, if we read the eighth and he's not here, we are going to take back the gift. They were giving a pen and a book. <laughs> and then, guess what? The eighth was me. <laughs> Seven people didn't attend. Last time, you know? It's impossible. Seven didn't attend, and the eighth was me. I will never forget that. <laughs> and I think God wanted to show me that, please, keep going. You can make it, you know? Yeah. Remember going to P3, I jumped two classes, <laughs> P1 and P2. Yeah, and then you jumped P4, P5, yeah. P6, uh, P7. Then, then, then when the man took me back to the street, I had to jump P4, P5, P6, P7. And, and then I went to S1. <laughs> you know? Yeah, hallelujah. Because I, I, I was scared to say that I'm in P3, P4, <laughs> you know, and all my uh, age mates were under, four, were in under 14 now by that time, were playing under 14 tournaments. And well, I, I was like, how would I go back to see P4? You know, because by that time I stopped. I didn't go back to school immediately. I had to stop for like more, almost four years. That's the process of like now going to the camp, coming to Kampala, Nativubu, you know. Yeah, I've been jumping so that I should end the story. I went to Rubidi Secondary. I will never forget my first day in a class. I got my book, my pen. Remember, I never used a pen before. We used to use pencils. I didn't know how I'm going to write with a pen because it was sliding. sliding. Because, yeah, <laughs> I never used to, I never wrote with a pen. And then, I had to wait for a teacher to write on a blackboard so that I can copy and, you know. Everyone kept quiet, they are writing, a man walking around the class talking. So I decided to ask my friend, how come the teacher is only talking and people are writing? He is not giving us notes. The man told me now the, loss, the lesson has been going on for the last 30 minutes. It was a history, <laughs> history class. <laughs> so the teacher was dictating, moving around. And kids are writing. Me, I'm waiting for him to write on the blackboard. And <laughs> I was like, this is another movie now. How am I going to do this? You know? Yeah. So I pretended as if I'm also writing, but I was doing nothing. <laughs> so after the lesson, I, I went outside. I felt so bad. I'm like, even now, I'm not going to manage. This is a very big level for me. If <laughs> I cannot write, I didn't even understand anything or word in English. Nothing. And the man was speaking extremely English. I didn't know anything in English. You know? So I, I went outside, I started crying, I prayed, I'm like, God, what can I do? I really want to be here, I want to have, I want to study, but, but my heart told me stay. Even if you don't learn anything from the class, just stay, stay. At least learn social life. Because I was a street kid, I didn't know how to socialize with the people. My life was totally different and my heart told me, stay. Just stay and at least learn how to socialize with people. Get friends from good families. Because that school was not bad. Rubidi Secondary is a good school, it's a government school. But I was on a football scholarship and my heart told me, stay. At least get friends. I stayed first time. I was among the last, I was the last, last, last. And they put me on a blackboard, you know, they put you on a blackboard. All the people that come from home for the second time, they read who was first and last. I was the last. And <laughs> because I was a footballer, I was the only player playing on a school team from uh, all level. Mm -hmm. 
in senior one as I was a senior one student playing for school team. I was very famous in a school. And for, they were like, for football? For football. And then they're like, hey, this football, I was the last. So I was popular and it went by the whole school. I went, to, I started crying again. I'm like, I'm going to leave this place. So I told uh, the games master, I told him, you know what? I think I don't need to be in this place. This is too much for me. I need to go. But I was a good player. He told me, you know what? Just stay. Because you're a good player, play for us. You are good and we are going to make sure that we try to teach you so that you can manage. But you know, I was even there. I was there. I was not supposed to be there because you're supposed to be there with the pass slip. You have to be there with the qualification. But they wanted me to be there because I was a very good, talented footballer. I told them I'm not even qualified to be here. I told me stay. So I stayed. I stayed and I worked so hard. I pulled my socks. God was so great. The last time I passed, I, I was among the last but not the ones to be put on a blackboard. So I did better than some of the people that even were qualified to be in that class. Can you imagine? I think I was in, among the last seven, but not the last two, four, because they were, <laughs> they, were, they were putting on blackboard the last, <laughs> they were putting on blackboard the last four. Third term, they told me that this is the term that qualifies people to the next class. <laughs> and the games master told me, if you don't pull out your socks, do what you can to make sure that you stay here. If you don't qualify, we will not qualify you. I worked so hard, so I decided, what, because by that time I started getting used. I know which, uh, which lessons I can do, at least to pull up my final art, I could hustle, you know. And then Ruganda, I know Ruganda very well. So I decided to take Ruganda, fine art, and then uh, political education by that time, and then history, I hustled, and then uh, there, there are some, like, at least eight books that I really focused on. I ignored the English because that was very difficult for me. I ignored the mathematics and biology, chemistry, all these science, science elections. I ignored. I concentrated so much on those that I can manage. And they helped me to pass on probation in second class, Pete, the senior two. That's how I moved on and on and on until senior three. But in senior three, I also passed on probation to senior four, but I did the, I, there I had to stop because I didn't have a capacity for, for P7 that can make me uh, qualify. So I, man, I ran, I went back to, in senior three, I got to know that I will not go to senior four if I don't have a capacity for P7, you know? So I decided to run back in primary schools to, to, oh. to do my P7 while oh. studying in senior three. Wow. But I, I, it wa I wasn't allowed because by the year, my year, by the year we went to senior one, they made everything, uh, they made science uh, lessons uh, official, like you could not, uh, compulsory, they were compulsory. Mm -hmm. And by that time, you can only do P7 and wait for four years to mature. You know, I couldn't manage, so I knew that. Let me stay here for a year. When it's done, I'll leave. So by the time we are all qualified to senior four, I passed on probation. I, I worked so hard, but I had to leave the school and start a new life. And then that's when I was like, I'm still young. There is no football club that can employ me. And by that time, there were no academies they were, that are so serious. By that time, the academy where I came from, I was a bit older by that. I think I was around 16, 17 years by then. I couldn't manage to go and play with the 14, 12 year kids mm -hmm. there. So I had to quit and start a new life. I went back and do into the hustling life. I started being a porter. A porter is the person that will carry things. Carry things on the building when they're building and then ah. But during that hustle I went back to Nachivuvo selling soda, say doing whatever and there is a, uh, uh, by that time, there is a man who was giving me weed, Mama. Do you know weed? That's a, that's a drug. Drug, yes. yes. He was giving me weed to sell uh, oh, on oh. the street. Yes. Because I had to do it because I had to survive, you know. And by that time, I was on the street, moving around, uh, loving music, hearing a lot of music from here and there. And I loved the music all my life. So I decided to start following the music because I knew football, I cannot make it but I can fight and make it to music. I started looking out for studios, mm -hmm. people who sing, connections. 
and started singing and God was so good to me. I didn't stay for long. I think I hustled for like uh, two years because I started getting interested in 2006, 2007, 2008. I made it with Bobby Wine Brother. We made it. I was uh, in Firebase with uh, Bobby Wine and then I made it. I worked so hard. I was, and God helped me. I had mature lyrics. I made it in 2008. Uh, that's when I received 50,000. My first time to earn 50,000 that is my own. When I sang that song, it's called Yanima with Bobo and Brother. The song played on radios, it went viral. That's how I became a musician. In 2014, I did another song that went so viral um, uh, in East Africa community and even in Uganda. It was the biggest song for the consecutive two years, 2010 and 2011. It was the biggest song. And this song kept on going. It's even one of the biggest Ugandan songs ever. But it kept on being big, big until today. It's a legendary song. Like The song that will never get old is called Stamina. It Stamina. Was, Stamina. Yeah, wonderful. It was a theme song for... Uh, 2011 politics, uh, political campaigns. It was loved so much by the president of Uganda. He loved it and many people used it. Many politicians used this song for their campaigns. It was the theme song for the campaign wow. 2011. <laughs> I kept on pushing and 2014 uh, God blessed me with another uh, song called City Loss that went viral almost worldwide with my kids. You know me, uh, what I discovered, one thing that I have to go back where I come from mm -hmm. because I left so many people on the street that mm -hmm. needed help. So I kept on going back to the, those people. I kept on sp sharing my man. I used to get in the music with them. And I, in my circle, so that's when I got an idea of putting these kids dancing on my songs because that's where I came from. And I wanted to give them a platform. I wanted to move with them. So um, my song, I put on my kids. They danced on it. I got them from Machindie and Katwe and Kawempe. I put them... These were street children. Street children. I put them, uh, they were street children, like kids with poor, 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 poor parents that cannot even do something. Even like people from my caliber, like where I came from, same kind of life. I decided to help them, to put them on my songs, promote them. And God was so good on our side, as you said, that God loves the poor. The song went viral. It is the first ever Ugandan song to go global on a global scale. <laughs> The song went viral. Uh, many people know us, and many people who knows me out there that are not African or Ugandan, they know me by putting kids on my songs, and that's what my story began. I was putting myself in their picture because that's where I came from, and uh, it kept on pushing me that you have to go back in the ghetto, you have to go back to the poor, you have to go back to your people. That's where you came from. You have to make a difference. This is in me, and it's still going, going on. So I decided to do two things, uh, music, dance, and drama with the kids, mostly I, I work with the kids, and then soccer academy, because soccer made me reach into the music world. Yeah. So I made a soccer academy, and then dancers. Both people do music, dance, and drama. I've made so many people big in the Uganda music industry, uh, musicians, and dancers, and now, right now, we have kids dancing worldwide, but Hallelujah. I started that trend. Hallelujah. Yeah, we have kids dancing all over the world, but we inspired them. And we made most of American artists to even become so popular, like someone like uh, uh, French Montana. He had never got a billion view before. Until he flew to Uganda, he, might, he, he did a video with my kids, and now he went platinum, like times three, he got a billion view ever. He had never gotten it before, and he was a big superstar, but he got that song from here. Many, we have worked with so many great musicians from all over the world. We have worked with uh, many African uh, 
uh, musicians. We have um, inspired many people, and many people are dancing now, and many kids now they have hope. So I decided to I had this dream of making a soccer school. It's a talent school with soccer school, running. I wanted to get all the talented people from all Africa in one place so that we can have success as like any successful person without a successor is a failure. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, if I touch these kids, I can promote the next generation. I, I can simplify their life. Because one time I was playing in a festival called the Distortion Festival in uh, Denmark and they were totally only white people and I, I was doing it with the playback, no band and I was thinking on the stage, I'm like, I think I'm not doing enough. They were having a good time but I was like, if I had a band in my back playing and even me holding a guitar singing to these people, I was going to do even much better because I was mix, I would mix my local instruments with the new modern instruments and my sound would be unique on this festival. So that kept on in mind. That my mind, I'm like, I, have to, I haven't done enough. I have to go back on the drawing board. I have to do the right thing. And I've been on this until God brought me to you. I don't even know how God brought me to you, Mama. But my story is too long. Like if I start telling you my story, I can't even finish it. I'll be crying here. So I'm trying to jump, 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 yeah. jump, shorten it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, God is directing our steps yeah. and that we came together is a divine move yeah. and uh, and it is for his glory you know <clears throat> I was told that what you sing is twice or three times as much communicated than speaking mm. because singing doesn't go here it goes right into the spirit yeah. and so uh, I do believe that the next step that God has planned in your life is, of course, it only can be done because you have been obedient up to here, okay? Yes. But now God leads us into a higher level to influence millions of children, to give their lives first to God. Amen. Then allow God be at his disposal. Say, Lord, do with me what you want, where you want, how you want, when you want, can you reduce me to zero, but glorify your name. Yeah. And God will glorify himself through the giftings he has given us. Mm. He has given, him the, give them, given them to us to be a blessing. Yes. And Eddie, that's what I appreciate so much about you. Yeah. You have gone through so many pains, disappointments, hurts, loneliness, yeah. hunger, uh, despair. But you never got bitter. Yeah. And you never forgot where you came from. Yeah. And that to me is worth so much. That shows me that you are a humble person. Yeah, good, you know? good mom. And, and that humility is what the people feel in you. Yeah, and even mama, sorry to cut yeah, you. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, what, uh, even selling weed on the street, I just did that because I'd already left school. I have no what to do. I, and I wanted uh, at least to get some little money to go and record music. But I didn't want that. And even during the street life, as I told you that it's a long story, they were not happening when we were on the street. Some kids were so tough, they mm -hmm. killed people and steal just little money. Mm -hmm. Just to, to steal a phone, you come and stab someone. And me, I never wanted to be in that kind of life. That's why I did what I could to make sure that I leave the street. Amen. And I never smoke weed. I've never smoked weed. I don't take alcohol. Yeah. I never done all that because I knew that this is not the way I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to live much better life than this. Yeah. And I knew that the only way to live this life I have to put God first and I have to make sure, kindness first, I have to make sure that mm -hmm. I try to go and associate with the people, they will welcome me. Amen. Amen. Mm. And, Amen. My, and my, the challenges I faced, it kept on humbling me all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, uh, when, when, I, now, when I moved around with you and I saw how the people are drawn to you, like flies to a light, you know, <laughs> and how they start smiling and how they want to just touch you. And, uh, and I knew that was more than talent. They see in you a personification of how poor, how, where people come from and where they can go. Yeah. And they, they feel the love you have for them. Yeah. And Eddie, don't ever give that up. I know, I love so, people. Yeah. Mm. Because, you know, the Bible says, uh, in, in Proverbs, the wages, and wages is something we earn. Yeah. 
yeah. the wages of humility. Mm -hmm. And humility doesn't mean you make yourself small, yeah. but you make God big. Good big, yes. And the fear of the Lord. And fear of the Lord doesn't mean you tremble before God, yeah. but you respect Him. You respect Him, yes. So the wages of humility and the fear of the Lord is riches, honor, life. Yeah. And all of it is flowing away, I promise you. Yeah. Not to, to, to hold on or to grab it, but to be a blessing. I always say, Lord, bless me, bless me so much that I can be a big blessing. Amen. 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 And so God will bless you very much to be a big blessing. Amen. And, and he loves to bless. And he looks for faithful people, you know? Yeah. And I, I must say, I think your mother instilled something in you. Yeah. Also, you, let, you left her very early, she left you very early without mm -hmm. wanting it, but you've had a sense of dignity. Yes, ma'am. Your mom made, must have made you feel you're special. Yeah. And that, that seed that she put in you is unbelievable, you know, because yes, that, is, that is something that is bearing fruit now. So, we bless your mom. Even her story, because my mom, she she didn't she left Rwanda when all her family members had killed. You know? They came here with the father when everyone else is killed. And they didn't have anything to do. My my grandfather was a, a scully, the gate man, and my father was a gate man. They met mm -hmm. at the gate. They were working they were both working on the same gate. Mm -hmm. And then my mom and my father, they, still, they got connected and my mother, my father, they got separated in between. My mother was selling tomato, banana, and uh, pan, you know, pancakes. They call yeah. it pancakes. Yeah. That was only his own, her only business. She could, uh, and we had only one room. Papyrus was our, our wall. Oh. Here is our shop. Living, our shop? Uh, yes. And then this is our living, very small. And my, her bed, she sleeps here, we sleep under the bed. Because the room was very tiny, we didn't have space. She sleeps on top with my little sister, me and my brother sleep under the bed. So whenever I remember all this that we went through, it humbles me so much and it reminds me that in this world, it's only God that can put you where you want to be. And it reminds me that so many people are going through the same. That's why you can see that me, I have many people. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think I have properties or what, but all the money I make, I give it to people. Amen. I, have, I have many, I have over a hundred kids that I deal with, I, I help. Sixty footballers, they stay in the same house. I pay their rent, I pay their medical, I pay everything. I look for how they're going to go to school. Mm -hmm. I, they've be, I've been doing that for four years. Mm -hmm. The dancers now. That's the ones we do music together, mm -hmm. you know? The girls. The girls and boys, mm -hmm. you know? I've mm -hmm. been taking care of these people, planning how they can succeed, pushing mm -hmm. them, looking for mm -hmm. connections. I'm doing, and even my other people that were hustled together on the street, they look for me now because they see where I am, and even the people that know me, because I came from a very poor community, so now I know who are my friends now. I'm very poor, and I, I'm the one to give them hope and help them as much as I can. I've spent all my money into the people. And I'm so... Uh, you have not thankful. spent it, you have deposited it. Amen. And it will bring much fruit. Amen. Much fruit. Amen. And Eddie, I'm so thankful because to have a talent school has been on my heart for many years. Amen. But n not being an exceptional talent in anything, you know, yes. Yes. I never thought I could, I could run that. Yeah. But now with you having that dream, I do believe it will come into fruition very fast. Amen. Very Amen. Fast. Yeah. Amen. And and that we will really see how the poor uh, can really make a difference in this world. Amen. You know, we already started here a football academy, and the coach said, you know, there are football academies in very rich schools in Kampala, mm. but the children come from rich families. <laughs> they cannot be challenged. Mm. They are immediately tired. Mm -hmm. They don't need to excel. They yeah. have everything. Yes. But street children have learned to be overcomers. Yes. And so I do believe, you know, I, we have a lot of very poor children yes. and how they excel. Yes. We have artists here that is just fantastic. Yes. yes. We, we also have, you know, we have the football academy and the 
so far I was told that with all the teams in Uganda, our team mm. won, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so I really believe God wants us to excel, to mm. give glory yeah. to his kingdom. God is good, man. Yeah. You know, As I, I brought you the... I brought you the medal for one of my kids that went with the Uganda Hippos, Uganda Under-20 yes. national team. Yes. He doesn't have a mom. He grew up without, he doesn't know where his father was. I'm, I'm told his father is a cattle keeper somewhere. He works for people. They give him cattle and he take care of them. And the mother went to Arabic countries there to also look for something. They have, seen, they have never seen a parent in their life. I've been with them since I got them. They don't have, have anywhere to go. Even if when you send some kids, go and check on your people. For them, they stay. You have nowhere to go. But guess what? This kid is one of the, the, the squad that has made Uganda qualify for World Cup. Hallelujah. Under 20. Hallelujah. And he, I brought you the medal. You yes, I have it at home. I wish yeah. I could so have brought it here. When yeah. you help a poor child, most of the times they know where they come from. Yeah. Mama, me, I don't sleep. I keep on thinking, how can I make life better for not only me, yeah. me and Amen. so many people Amen. I know Amen. Amen. that they are going through the same. Amen. And I do believe that we are now entering into the era of the kingdom of God yeah. manifested on this earth. Yeah. And God wants us to be blessed. Amen. To be a blessing. To be a blessing, yeah. yes. And so, Eddie, I can't wait. We, we have the land already for that school. Y yes, ma'am. I can't so wait much. now for you to make that, you know, the, 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 the vision bearer. Yes. Also gets from God yes, the vision. Yes, ma'am. And you need to put that down. Yes. On paper. Yeah. And then we we'll, we'll trust the Lord because what God orders, and I do believe this is an order from God. Yes. He will pay. He will pay, yeah. So the money is no problem ever. Mm. Mm. God looks for obedience. Yes, God looks for people that have faith. Yeah. God looks for people that trust him more yeah. than what they have available. Yeah. You know, when I think, when Jesus preached in the desert, 5,000 men, they didn't even count the women and the, and the children. You know, I know there were 15,000 people and they were hungry. <coughs> and he told Philip, let's feed them. And Philip immediately thought how much they had in the cash box. Mm. Impossible, he said, impossible. Yeah. Yeah, but for God, nothing is impossible. Good. There was a little boy mm. pushing, pulling the, the, the clothes of Philip. Yeah. And, uh, and Jesus finally, and everybody said, get away. And Jesus said, what does he want? Philip said, you know that little boy, he has, I don't remember exactly, but I think three fish and five little breads. And Jesus said, let him bring it. That little. Yes. And Jesus blessed this. And it became the food for 15,000 people. Wow. So, you know, he put the, the disciples together. <laughs> and he said, he had three fish. So one got the head. The other one, the middle part of the fish. Peter got the tail, you know. The next one got the head again. So every, and a little piece of bread. So everyone had either a tail, a head, or a little piece of a fish and a little bread. Go and feed them. Can you imagine how they felt? That's how we feel right now with the yeah. academy, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But Peter said, I'm not going to go to the adults. They will think I'm crazy. I go to the children, you know? So he went to the children and said, are you hungry? Yeah! <laughs> he said, okay, let's try it. He took the tail. Whoa! There was a fish. He gave him the first one. There was another tail. He took it again. Whoa! Another one. So after the second one, he got now cheeky, you know? And wow, wow, wow. He gave out fish thousands of fish from having only a tail wow. in his head. Wow. Wow. And you know, sometimes we don't know that how God performs miracles. Yeah. So they had to even collect all the leftovers. Wow. And they got 12 baskets full of leftovers so that they would not forget that this was a mighty miracle. God made them carry home the leftovers. Yeah. Now they all knew I had a little tail and a little piece of bread. And now I'm carrying a whole basket full wow. with leftovers. Mm. So they knew we serve a miracle working God. Mm. And I want to say that to you, dear ones that listen, we work a miracle work. We, we serve a miracle working God. Mm. God can multiply anything if you give it to him. The little boy had to give it to Jesus and Jesus blessed it. Whatever we give to Jesus, and he blesses it, will multiply like crazy. Amen. 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 So also, all your, your talents, all your yes. giftings, yes. release them to Jesus and yes, say, ma use them for your glory. Yes, use them for the benefit of millions of people yes, and use them that I have joy 
that the world cannot give and cannot take. Right, Amen. Amen. And there's many, much more st in, in you. There's a lot of, I, I think you're going to be a fantastic pianist. Yes, a, a fantastic guitarist. G guitarist. Yeah. Mm. And of course in drumming. Dancers, in drumming. drumming. I know you're very good yeah, already. Yes. So, you know, I trust that this message has now encouraged everyone. God, for God, nothing is impossible. Yes, ma'am. God is strong in the weak. Yes, ma'am. And God uses for nobodies in the world to make somebody out of, of that person. You know, person. one of my... Uh, for everybody. One of my albums yeah. uh, is called Zero to Hero. The reason why I, I chose... What does it mean? Zero to Hero. Hallelujah. The reason why... Zero I to Hero. Ah, I love that. I love <laughs> that. Yes. So, um, the reason why I chose that, Mama, for real, I came from zero. Amen. I came from zero. This is not a joke. I don't, I'm not yeah. joking. I'm not lying. When God is my witness, I came from zero. Yeah. But I want to tell you something. Mm. Unless every one of us comes to zero, mm. God cannot use us. Yes. Otherwise, we are full of ourselves. Yes. And God doesn't want to glorify self. He wants to glorify himself. Yeah. So, unless we come to the point of Galatians 2.20, I, the old I, is crucified with Christ. Yes. No longer I live, but mm. Christ lives in me, mm. who loved me and gave himself up for me. Darling, mm. everyone has to come to this point, sooner or later, yeah. if God can use them. Yeah. Otherwise, we are always standing in his way. Mm. You know? Mm. You know you need him 100%. 100%. Amen. Mm. That's the greatest maturity of a Christian, my dear. Amen. That's why many Christians are never breaking through into their destiny because they think they have to offer something to God. Mm. No. They can only release everything to God yes. and receive and everything from Him. From him yeah. You know, I asked the Lord, how can you use, the, how can you, I told him as such an old woman to build up something like this. Mm. You can't call me that, okay? I'm 33 because Jesus is my life. <laughs> but I said, how can you use me, Lord? I would never have chosen me. He said, because you're not standing in my way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Many people stand in God's way. Yes. They want to give God orders what yes, to do. Yes, yes. He wants to tell us yes. what his plan God's is. Plan, yes. So I advise everyone that listens here, pray, God. I prayed that when I was 12 years old and have repeated it many times. God, don't ever let me die until I know the dream that you had for my life. Wow, amazing. So please ask God for the dream that he has in your life for you. And I promise you that dream is far beyond what you can imagine. So Eddie, amazing. what is ahead of you? is far beyond Amen. what you can imagine. Amen. 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 And we work as a team. Yes. Team, T-E-A-M, together, each achieves more. more. Amen. Yes. We need to all work in the body of Christ as a team. We are a blessing to each other. Like, you know, you're listening to this YouTube, but behind these YouTubes are some IT people that you never see. Mm. But without them, you couldn't see those videos. Mm. So I thank you very much, the ones that are behind it. Amen? Amen. For your service and for your willingness to be in the background, not even seen. Yeah. But you make it possible. Mm. So please, don't consider your service small because all of us are a servant in the kingdom of God, glorifying together the King of kings, the Lord of lords, being a blessing to this world and having joy that the world cannot take and cannot, cannot give. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Shalom, shalom. We love you. Don't forget, you are highly favored, deeply loved, and beautifully made. And the plan that God has for your life is far beyond Amen. what you can imagine.